All right, here we go. In the last video on trig, it was just the basic skills that you needed. This video is going to actually apply trigonometry to finding missing sides and angles. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to find the variable x in all of these problems. Now, things are going to be a little bit different for the setup based on where the location of x is. So in this first example, we see that we have our angle 34. Now remember, all of our opposite adjacent and hypotenuse are always based on where the angle is. So x is opposite of the angle. This is opposite of the 90 degree angle. That's always our hypotenuse. And then this is right next to the angle, so it's known as the adjacent side. So we have an O and an A. Well, if you go back and remember our SOKATOA, the O and the A go with T, which stands for tangent. So the setup is always the trig that we're going to use, sine, cosine, or tangent. The angle always goes next, and then we have our side over other side ratio, depending on what it is. So we have opposite and adjacent, so we know we're going to use tangent. The angle is 34 degrees, and it's equal to opposite over adjacent, which is x over 10. Now in the last video, we learned that you need to get x by itself, so you need to multiply both sides by 10. So x is going to be equal to 10 times the tangent of 34 degrees. And again, in the last video, we talked about how you enter this into the calculator. So all you have to do is type 10 times the tangent of 34 in the calculator, and you're going to get 6.7 after you round to the nearest tenth. And that's it. So this is the most important part about this is being able to set it up. After that, it's just push a few buttons in your calculator and you're good to go. In the next example, again, look at the angle. This is our opposite side. This is our hypotenuse. We do not have an adjacent side. So we are going to use so. Um, so that's going to be sine of 80 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now, in the last video, again, we talked about this. When you have x in the denominator, what you want to do is you just want to switch both of these. So then we have x is equal to 7 divided by the sine of 80 degrees. Type it in your calculator, 7 divided by the sine of 80, and you are going to end up with 7.1. Again, make sure your calculator is in degrees. If you are not getting the same answers as I am, that means you probably have your calculator in radians. The last one in this row is finding an angle. So what you're still going to do is you're still going to look at this. This is still going to be our adjacent side. This is still our hypotenuse, and this is our opposite, which we do not have. So due to the fact we're using A and H, we're going to use cosine of x is equal to our adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 8 over 12. Yes, it can be reduced, but there's no need to do so. Now, this is the other thing we talked about in the last video. In order to make a cosine go away, we need to use inverse trig or inverse cosine of both sides. Okay, now what that's going to do is that's going to get this part to cancel, and you have x is equal to, and now this is just inverse cosine of 8 twelfths. And all you have to do is type that in the calculator, and it's going to tell you that you have a 48.2 degree angle. And that's how you use trig to find missing angles and missing sides. Um, so let's move on. We have two questions that are, are a little bit more challenging. Um, well, actually, the first one's really easy if you're slick. Um, but the second one is going to require you to do a little bit of extra thinking. So why don't you go right ahead and pause this video and see if you can find um, X in both of these problems. And as soon as you're ready, click play, and we'll see if you got it right. So like I said, the first one is really easy if you're slick. This just requires you to remember a little bit about 30, 60, 90 triangles. Since we have a 60 degree angle here, we know that x is just going to be 4 root 3 because of our s, s root 3, and our 2s. But if you didn't notice that, you're still going to get you know, the correct answer. Um, by using trigonometry, you would just have a decimal instead. 
In the next problem, uh, what you needed to do is you needed to draw an altitude because you have to remember right now you do not know how to use any trigonometry with non-right triangles. There are ways of using trig with, you know, regular triangles. Uh, it's called the law of sines and the law of cosines, but we are not going to work with that right now. This is just right triangle trig. So the first thing you had to do is you had to draw an altitude. And what it might be helpful for you to do is actually just draw this triangle off to the side. This is still 10. This is still 40. And uh, you can call this Y. You probably don't want to reuse X. So then you're just going to do the same thing that we would do. Uh, we have uh, the adjacent side and we have the hypotenuse. So we're going to start out by using cosine of 40 is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. We need to multiply both sides by 10 to get those to cancel. So y is equal to 10 times the cosine of 40 degrees. And as soon as you type that in the calculator, it's going to tell you that x or y, whatever you're using, is 7.7. .7. But you need to hold on for a second. That's just this piece. You have to go back to the original equation, and remember, this has just been split in half because it's isosceles, so x is actually 15.4, and that would be the correct answer for that guy. All right, that's a little bit of practice on how you find angles and sides using right triangle trig. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.